Hello guys, my name is Dan. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some of Reese's most updated Telegram messages he gave us on the official Ecomi Telegram group. There are some really awesome morsels and updates on his most recent messages a couple days ago. I think it will really help the community get uplifted and get a sense of where this company is going. I feel like the FUD levels are at all time highs and it's mostly because there hasn't been anything big coming up. People are a little bit disappointed that Immutable won't be happening this month but most likely will be happening in August. And if you remember I did say that we might have Immutable actually happen in September because of the sheer size of this update and what this really entails. So if you've been listening to my videos this shouldn't be a surprise to you. I think you guys will be really interested in some of these updates, so let's get right to it. But before we begin, like always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, hit that notification bell, and let's jump into it. All right, guys, I just want to take a moment and show you guys some awesome merch that WChamp has created for us. We have the Akomi to the Moon t-shirt. I actually just bought this, pre-ordered it here. But it's the Akomi to the Moon, and it's a rocket. It's a great t-shirt here. If you like this type of shirt, you can definitely purchase it. I'll put a link down in the description below. And you can use the code LEE10, LEE10, in order to get a percentage off, 10% off there. And all proceeds, all profits I make from this We'll go to the channel. I don't take a cent out of any sort of revenue we receive on this channel. It goes straight back to improve the quality for you guys. So that's a great shirt there. We have another shirt here. It's the Omi Homi t-shirt. I will definitely purchase this here as well. I will pre-order it. But same thing, if you like this type of shirt, you can just pre-order it here. Use discount code LEE10 in order to get 10% off. All proceeds here I make will go straight to the channel and let's get back to it. So the first question we have is about how we are looking with all the most recent updates and this is probably the meat and potatoes of this video here. So let's get to it. Number one, immutable going great. Contracts have been deployed on testnet and the whole thing is undergoing heavy testing now. Dan said he's expecting that to last at least two to four weeks depending on how it all fares. And I think we're waiting on a couple dev updates from Immutable side as well. Had a meeting about the token and new utilities yesterday, which remember we talked about how uh, Reese is going to add some new utilities that will burn Omi, even burn from circulating supply. Which went really well. Dan will now figure out the development schedule for them and how long they'll take so we can return utility as soon as possible to the token after the immutable migration that comes first. Buybacks are on David Yu's table. He is prioritizing it and finalizing whatever it is that has to be done, legal accounting compliance. As soon as I have an update on that front, I'll let you know. So the key thing here is that we're gonna get some new added OMI token utilities. So why is that a big deal? So if you saw one of my last videos, you would have heard that they are thinking about ways to burn OMI token from the circulating supply. So the thought here is maybe you can buy a feature or get some exclusive access and pay for it using OMI and this OMI would be burnt. So this would actually burn from the circulating supply. That's the biggest thing influencing price right now. If that circulating supply would be organically decreased, we would see increased value of our token due to scarcity. A third point and a point of contention in the community is the aspect of the buybacks. People look at buybacks as the holy grail for raising the value of this token. And I won't say that's not true. Buybacks are nice. They provide some positive buy side pressure. But when you do the math on it, you'll see that buybacks, although nice to have, won't moonshot this token on its own. Currently how the buybacks are being done, it's technically 10% of sales after fees. And even there's some speculation, it could be after some costs as well. So buybacks only provide at best 7% buyback pressure every single month. And when you do the math on it, it doesn't provide that much benefit like people are saying. Despite this, it's good to have some buybacks and we know buybacks are coming soon. It's an integral part of the OMI token model. I just don't think it matters that much even though it's nice to have. And lastly, we see the immutable migration is going through heavy testing right now. I definitely see the immutable migration happening definitely in September, so that's really good. It's gonna kick off 
all the other things we need to get this token back on track and hitting two to five cents by the end of the year. So big question from Dev here about the ownership of your digital collectibles. And Reese responds, the point of the design is to make it easy and secure for everyone without having to know about or deal with crypto keys, blockchains. But once we've moved over to immutable, and open the interoperability of the NFTs. You can send them to other marketplaces and store them wherever you like, like a ledger or something that you have the keys for. So we're eventually going to get to the point, and that's one of the points of the immutable migration, is to send it over to something like OpenSea and sell it. A lot of people have been criticizing Vivi because they think that just because you can't move your collectible off the app, it's not a true NFT. This is not true. It's definitely associated with one individual token, therefore it is a true non-fungible token. But people feel like if you can't transfer it, that's not the case. So that's a difference in perception, but we need to know that's not true. And interoperability is coming. We know that OpenSea is also migrating over to Immutable, so we will eventually be able to transfer this very easily. And then I think we're definitely gonna blow up in terms of being able to sell our digital collectibles, the wider the audience, the wider the customer base, the more likely these collectibles will be valuable. So it's a good thing for flippers and collectors alike. So another thing here, OpenSea has already announced support for Immutable. It's a big part of the reason we chose to move them in the first place. Not sure about not sure about Rare or any of those as Immutable is layer two and they need to integrate and support their protocols. So definitely transfer or migration over to OpenSea transferring our collectibles is definitely in the pipeline and will probably happen after the immutable migration. I've been saying this for a couple months now. Immutable migration is a key part of our growth strategy. We need that in order to eventually moon our token. Any predictions on when we'll have our licenses? Probably MTLs. It's been developed and the MTL alongside the rest of the app are now going through the compliance stage. Personally, I don't know how long that takes, but I'm assuming a couple weeks it'll roll out to a small group of testers and then expand from there. So what is MTL? MTL is money transfer license. We need that in order to convert our gems over to OMI or cash. It's definitely a key part of what flippers are doing right now, how flippers are operating in the market. If they flip a collectible, they make a large profit. They have to use escrow accounts in order to sell off those gems, and they usually sell them at a deep discount, at least 20%. So that's not good if you're a flipper. A lot of people are waiting for MTL. I'm not much of a flipper in general, so for me, I don't think that's too big of a deal. Eventually, when we can actually buy and sell with OMI, I think that's a good stopgap solution, but I think people will be happy once we have a full MTL capability. Another thing here you might be interested, Reese says, yeah, we'll be introducing customizable NFTs at some point. Again, another reason it's great to be on Immutable. So eventually there will be new weapons, skins, and items that you can use to customize your collections even further. Now, if you look at collectibles in general, a lot of times you can buy accessories for them. So this is kind of a no-brainer to eventually be able to buy different skins, etc., if you listen to my last video, we talked about how they're going to create ways where you can burn OMI token. And the more OMI is burnt, the more it's going to increase the value of the token overall. Skins and new items and features and weapons, that's definitely a good, easy way to increase the amount of burn, increase the amount of sales. I'm sure they're going to be relatively inexpensive, but $5 here on top of your collectible you just purchased that's an easy way to burn more OMI. So I'm very excited about that. And definitely if you're a flipper or a collector, you're going to be excited about this too. So really awesome thing to hear from Reese. Another statement here, just the tip. <laughs> just the tip, my friend. I think I think Reese has a sense of humor. They have 8,000 characters or something, tens or thousands of comics. Like there's so much Marvel content to come. I'd say we'll take a bit of a Marvel rest in September, but we'll eventually get to the point where there's Marvel content dropping almost every week, I think. And really, I think we'll drop comics most weeks too once they're all rolling in. So definitely going to see a lot more comics. People definitely are attracted to the comics. I definitely like the comics. I bought three of them so far, all commons. So uh, you conspiracy theorists out there, I'm not getting any special deals for talking about a Comey. So I wish I did. 
but I don't. I just got a bunch of comments, just probably like the rest of you unwashed masses here. So it's not because we don't consider them. It's because we're not on ETH. Once we've migrated to Immutable, we'll shoot over to the top of these NFT lists. We'll easily doing more sales than 99% of the platforms and apps out there. This is kind of a low key answer, but it definitely shows us our moon potential. Like once we are backed by an Ethereum based chain, a side chain, a layer two solution, once we have that, we're gonna be the king of the NFT space. And that's what people don't realize. All right, guys, so just to summarize, we know immutable migration is gonna be happening in September. That's a key part of OMI's strategy in 2021. It's gonna open all the doors in order for us to eventually moon. We have buybacks coming most likely this year. We have money transfer license coming this year. We also have OMI utility that will also be added probably by the end of 2021, if not early 2022. So that's kind of big there. We're eventually going to be able to move our collectibles over to something like OpenSea in order to sell that. So that'll be big for collectors and things like that. We'll probably have a Marvel break in September, so definitely see some new content. But we'll eventually get to the point where we're going to be dropping Marvel multiple times a week on top of whatever else we have planned. So I hopefully we get to the point where we drop four collectibles a week by the end of 2022. That'll be nice for the token burn. So a lot of positive things happening in the pipeline, guys. You just got to stick with it. Remember, there's big things happening. So anyways, guys, if you like today's video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. And hey, I'll see you in the next